For Crema Media's Polity, I'm Zandile Mavuso. Cliff Decker Hofmeyer Employment Director Johan Bortes joins me in studio to discuss the Employment Equity Amendment Bill. Welcome, Johan. Thank you very much. Nice to be here, Zandile. The Employment Equity Amendment Bill introduced a new form of unfair discrimination, which will regulate situations where different employment conditions are are applied to different employees who are in the same position. Can you kindly just elaborate on that for us? Yeah, th thank you. It's an interesting amendment that the Employment Equity Amendment Bill proposes, and it specifically stipulates that an employer may not differentiate between people doing the same work or work of the same value on terms, conditions of employment. So I cannot um, have different terms, conditions of employment for two people doing the same or similar work where the differentiation is based on one of the prohibited or listed grounds or grounds uh, similar to that or analogous to that. Even as the Act stands at the moment, the Employment Equity Act, an employer cannot uh, employ black staff on different terms and conditions to white staff, for instance, or males on different terms and conditions to females, you know, or Christian staff on different terms and conditions to Muslim staff, mm. for instance. So the law currently prohibits unfair discrimination on a listed ground um, on any aspect, including on terms and conditions of employment. But what the amendment will certainly have the effect of is to draw attention to the fact of both employers and employees that an employer may not differentiate on unfair grounds where it wishes to place people on different terms and conditions of employment. Now that does not mean that all employees should have the same terms and conditions of employment. I could, as an employer, give my management team a different pension fund, for instance, or place them, uh, give them different benefits, put them on a different bonus structure than I do to my junior management team or my supervisory team or my entry-level staff because the business needs are different. I need to retain certain skills. So for my very scarce skilled people, my accountants, for instance, I, I can have a different, I can have different terms and conditions of employment. But I cannot within that group of employees say that, okay, my male accountants, I'm going to pay you more than I'm going to pay my female accountants. And that is what the amendment bill seeks to bring to the attention of parties. You cannot unfairly discriminate on, on such a basis. Okay. And then in relation to this, has there been a case in the past that actually led to the amendment of this clause? You know, unfair discrimination is such an interesting uh, um, part of our law. There's been a number of cases dealing with unfair discrimination going back from discrimination on the basis of HIV, going back on the discrimination on the basis of religious grounds, you know, where an employee as a Rastafarian, you know, wanted to wear hair in a specific manner. Um, th there are very interesting cases in, the, in our law reports dealing with unfair discrimination. One that I think could have prompted this sort of, of change, you know, uh, relates to changes in, uh, in, in, in benefits, where a group of black employees you know, who, um, there were only eight out of 50 staff members um, uh, in a specific group of employees who were black. The rest of the staff members were precluded from joining that uh, provident fund. Okay, and uh, the court said, but hang on, if the, the rest of the group who are predominantly black are precluded from joining the same staff fund um, as, uh, um, as, the, uh, as, as the other staff members who are predominantly white, you know, the effect of that differentiation is that you're discriminating against people on a listed ground, namely race. So on the face of it, I'm saying, okay, monthly paid staff, I give one benefit. Uh, weekly paid staff or wage earning staff, I give a different benefit. You can do that. You can differentiate on that basis. But if all your wage staff are black and all your monthly paid staff are white, then it's clear that the effect of the discrimination is, of the differentiation, is that you are discriminating on, on race. And that is what the Act says you can't do. So I think the amendment will bring focus to terms and conditions of employment, say, where you have different terms and conditions of employment, for people doing the same or similar job, make sure that you don't discriminate unfairly against them. Mm. And then there's another clause on affirm affirmative action that has given increased power to Labor Department in order for them to enforce um, fines to companies that do not comply to affirmative action. Um, are there situations, do you think this will actually bring about stability in the workplace in terms of um, more enforcement being done by the Labor Department in terms of companies actually complying to this? Look, I, I think as a practitioner, any increased power or any um, increased focus on 
achieving compliance with the Employment Equity Act should be applauded. And it's something that we should all be, be striving towards and make sure that it happens. There's a, a large number of companies out there that are making significant efforts in order to comply with the Employment Equity Act, that have proper employment equity plans in place, and that have positive, taken positive steps to eradicate discrimination, make sure that we move towards our goal as far as employment equity is concerned. Unfortunately, there are not a large group of employers that do not do that. And I think the department's efforts in order to bring those parties to book are being hampered, one, by the, 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 the negligible fines that, that apply um, to, to non-compliance as far as that issue is concerned. Uh, more importantly, though, I think the department lacks the resources in order to proper, uh, properly police compliance, uh, not only with the Employment Equity Act, but with all the labor legislation. So personally, I would like to see a greater portion of our budget being allocated to the Department of Labor so that they can appoint more labor inspectors to go out there to the small factories and to those um, uh, places out there in, in rural uh, factories out there in rural areas where there is an absolute disregard for the employment legislation. Because that will not only be to the benefit of the employees in that environment, it will be to the benefit of employers and the, the industrial community at large. Because compliance with legislation comes at a cost. So why should employers that are doing the right thing by seeking to comply with our employment equity legislation and other employment legislation be penalized with the cost of doing so, whereby their competitors you know, do not have to inc uh, inc incur that sort of cost um, and can therefore, as a result, unfairly compete with complying employers in the workplace or in the, in the marketplace, and that, that's not fair. So I would personally like to see more labor um, inspectors, more resources given to the Department of Labor, and I think the increases in the fines and um, you know uh, applicable to the Employment Equity Act should be applauded. Mm. And there's also a clause that says that um, this affirmative action um, law was only applicable to people um, who are foreign um, who, who, who are from foreign countries that have a citizenship in South Africa prior to 94, and those post-94 do not benefit from this. Um, why is this? I, I would have to speculate as to the, the underlying um, motivation behind this. I have seen reports whereby ex concern had been expressed about the increased number of foreign nationals, you know, or, um, or, or naturalized foreign nationals that are in executive or senior managerial positions compared to where we were in 1994. Mm -hmm. So I suspect that part of the fear or concern is that companies are seeking to comply with the employment equity legislation by bringing in foreign nationals who um, may be black males or females uh, and then have naturalized and have permanent residence in South Africa, but who were not in South Africa prior to 1994. So the amendment will have the effect that those individuals who were um, previously disadvantaged in terms of the Employment Equity Act and were citizens in South Africa before 1994, or their descendants, they will be the beneficiaries of affirmative action provisions in the Employment Equity Act. Uh, people who otherwise would qualify to be designated employees, in other words, black males, females, Indian males, females, uh, colored or Asian males and females, um, who at the moment can be recipients of or, or, or can uh, take um, advantage of the employment equity legislation. They would not be able to do so once the amendments uh, get implemented. So that would be the effect of the amendment of the legislation. Thank you very much, Johan, for your time. That was Cliff Decker, Hoff Mayor Employment Director, Johan Bertus, speaking about Employment Equity Amendment Bill.